Alright, in this video we're going to take a look at a nifty little forensics tool called Veneto. And what Veneto does is examine the thumbs.db files that Windows by default will generate in any folders that contain images. Um, Veneto is really a simple program, it's got a very specific purpose so there aren't a lot of crazy options to worry about or any real confusing things to get caught up with. It's very straightforward and um, as we will soon be demonstrating is actually got a pretty unique usefulness to it. Um, Got to give credit where it's due. Most of this information I learned from the Backtrack forums which is an excellent place if you're interested in learning more about forensics I highly recommend checking that out. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop over here to VirtualBox and kind of show you what I'm doing here as far as this goes. I'm running this all in a virtual machine because I need to be able to screen capture and I want to simulate booting over booting a live CD over some kind of you know Windows box and the only way I can do that without a bunch of hardware is to run it virtualized so what I've got here is a install of Windows XP and if we go and look I've mounted the uh, Backtrack 4 ISO into its virtual CD-ROM drive, so when I start this, it's just going to go ahead and boot Backtrack 4. I also do have a copy of Backtrack 4 as a virtual machine, but we won't be using that for this demonstration. So I'm going to go ahead and start this up and let it do its thing for a second. I'm going to go ahead and boot in forensics mode. And all that's really going to do is ensure that nothing gets auto-mounted so we don't have anything mounting that we don't want. Um, it's really just to preserve the machine as much as possible. You know, you don't want to, when you're doing forensics work, you definitely don't want to be treading and possibly writing swap space and whatnot all over the computer that you'll be using to collect evidence. All right, so this is finished booting. I'm going to go ahead and start the KDE environment. Load that up here. Okay, the Backtrack 4 GUI has loaded all the way. First thing I want to do is just come down here, open a console window, and pull up the Veneto help, just so we can all see the options. And um, as you can see, there's not a lot there. The ones we are interested in are the dash lowercase o and the dash uppercase h. And simply, that's just going to extract the thumbnails to a directory we specify and uh, write an HTML report as well. And the HTML report is really handy, especially if you're dealing with large numbers of thumbnails, because you just can really get, you know, out of hand quickly, and that will give us a nice organized HTML file that we can kind of go through and see things in a clear manner. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and pop up the version number, just so everyone can see that. If you're following along, you can see what version I'm using there. 0.06. I'm just going to clear that out. And before we can use Veneto, there's a couple things we need to do. First, we need to mount the drive that we're interested in. In this case, it's this 10G Media. So just click on it. It's going to auto mount for us. Thank you, technology. Um, as you can see, just a standard Windows disk. And then what we're also going to do is um, I'm going to go ahead and put in a USB drive because we need somewhere to store the extracted images too. We've got to remember that, well, it doesn't look like it right here. What we're actually simulating is a live CD running on top of a Windows box that we don't have, nor do we want any write capabilities on uh, the Windows hard drive. So we definitely don't want to disturb something we're investigating because you, just, you don't want to contaminate evidence. So pop in the USB stick, it's going to auto mount us for us. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and go over there and just make a directory called thumbs. So as you can see, it's the only file on there. And then I'll just CD back to keep that clean. And then what we want to do next is look for thumb db files so to do that we'll just run a search for files named thumbs.db 
can see right away it pulled up these two on our Windows disk and then it pulled up two more under it that are just part of backtrack and we're not interested in those. The one we're interested in is this stuff folder right here and um, sounds kind of suspicious to me so I'm going to go check it out. I'm just going to go ahead and pop open the Windows drive in there. There's the stuff folder we were looking at and there's nothing in here but a thumbs.db file so obviously at one point there were some images in this folder and they have since been erased but whoever erased them did not do a proper job and they left behind this little file for us to go ahead and poke around with so we're gonna do that now I'm gonna go ahead and run the even a help file just so we can see the options again and like I mentioned earlier we're gonna be using the dash capital H and the dash lowercase o. It's just going to write out our thumbnails and an HTML report for us. So just tell Veneto dash H O and then where we want this stored is on the USB stick, the thumbs file, and then the file we're actually going after. I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste this to avoid any typos. Save some typing and we'll run it and sure enough there were six thumbnails in that cache and gave us a nice list that we can see there I'm gonna go ahead and pop on over to my USB stick and let's take a look yep sure enough the stolen pictures of the military research on hamster named Maverick. They're all right here. And here's our nifty little HTML report, which I'll open up so you guys can see how nice this is. Look at that, it gives us directory name. We go down, tells us when it was modified, the size, it's MD5. And then it breaks up our thumbnails for us. You can see, this makes it a little easier to keep track of. So that, in this case, you know, really probably wasn't needed other than to document this kind of stuff because there were only a few thumbnails. But you can see how that would be handy, especially when they start to get a really large number of files. So we have extracted the thumbs from that file and uh, successfully identified what we were looking for. Now we uh, can go prosecute them. If you guys are interested in anti-forensics against the Veneto tool, it's actually pretty simple. Let me just pull up a picture folder and I will show you what's going on here. See in this, my pictures, we've got my background image. If we go to folder options, view, you'll have to show hidden files and uncheck the hide protected operating system files and then you'll see the thumbs.db file now you can either just physically delete that by you know just deleting it like you would any other file or if we go back into that same place we were there's a little checkbox here that says do not cache thumbnails if you check that, Windows will not generate thumbs.db files for uh, any of your folders that have images. So if that's something you're worried about, you can just come in here and check that off and you will no longer have to worry about those files being generated anywhere. So that pretty much concludes our video on the Veneto Forensics tool. Hopefully you found it helpful and somewhat interesting. And uh, we'll see you guys next time for something else.